All right, we're going to start off the year in geometry talking about undefined terms. There are three undefined terms that we're going to talk about today. And when I say undefined terms, an undefined term is something that does not have a formal definition, but we all agree on what these definitions actually mean. All right, so the first undefined term that we're going to discuss is a point. Now this dot represents a point. The reason why I say this dot represents a point and is not actually a point is because a point has no dimension. So we live in a three-dimensional world. The things that we have around us have length and width and height, but a point actually has no dimension. So in order to represent a point, I use this dot. And then when we label points in geometry, we label them in a very specific way. We have to label them with a capital letter. So I could label this point, point A. I cannot use a lowercase letter. Um, I can't use a number. I have to use a capital letter. Now, this is one point. If I introduce another point, let's say we have point X and point Y, now, through two points, I can create a line. And a line has one dimension. It extends forever and ever and ever, and that's why we add these arrows to show that it extends forever uh, in one direction, or, or sorry, in both directions, and has one dimension. There's a postulate that we can write, and that is through any two points. there is exactly one line. And what we mean by this is that if I have these two points, there's only one line that will connect them. So if I have, try and draw a line here, 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 the only line that will work that goes through both of them is this one. Now, let's say I introduce a third point. And it's important that this third point does not lie on the same line. So if I connect a line here, that point is not on the line uh, that would contain the other two points. If I introduce a third point, and let's label them Q, R, and S, this can actually create a new geometric figure. This geometric figure is called a plane. Now a plane has two dimensions. So where a line has one dimension, let's say length, a plane actually has a length and a width, two dimensions, but no height, so not three-dimensional. A postulate here is that through any three points not on the same line, There is exactly one plane. All right, so if I had um, a plane being two-dimensional, imagine it's a piece of paper. If I tried to place a piece of paper through these two points and this one, there's no way I could get another plane because as soon as I move it at all, it's no longer through one of those points. In order to represent a plane, we draw something that looks like a floor or wall, but it actually extends without end. So when I draw it, I draw kind of like a four-sided figure 
or a quadrilateral. Now this, what I draw, has an end, but a plane actually has no end. It goes on forever and ever and ever, just like a line would, but a line extends uh, in one dimension, whereas a plane extends in two dimensions. Now every other geometric figure we talk about this year can be constructed uh, using points, lines, and planes. So now we want to use these undefined terms to explore defined terms. Below you will see examples and non-examples or counterexamples of different figures in geometry. So example one is a segment. All three of these are examples of segments. These three figures are counterexamples, or examples of figures that are not segments. And what I'd like you to do now is on the left-hand side, write your own definition of what you think a segment is based on the examples and counterexamples. I don't need you to look up any definitions. I just want you to look at these and try and construct your own definitions um, by the examples and counterexamples. And we will discuss this in class tomorrow.